Hello everybody, Happy New Year! Sleeping Comics here for another great year of comic collecting. I hope you had a good New Year's. Uh, I did. Kind of a slow week for uh, comic book collecting. I wasn't able to get to the uh, local comic book store here, but still some things came in and we'll take a look at those. Uh, I'll start out here with Peach Momoko. So uh, many people have said that 2020 was the year of the peach, which I think you would have to agree with them. She uh, really, really hit stride this last year. And of course, if you know or didn't know, she signed her exclusive deal with Marvel. So going forward, she'll be, I guess, only making Marvel covers, which is too bad. Um, you know, this is a perfect example of uh, the Blade Runner one that she did. She did a number of those. And um, wow, they're really, really good. And for me, it's kind of hit and miss on some of her stuff. Um, but the stuff that she does that, uh, I like, I, I really, really like it. And it's so unique and different. And I think that to a certain degree is another reason why, um, she's caught the eye of a lot of people and a lot of collectors. Uh, this is the cover B or one of the variants. It wasn't an exclusive variant or a incentive variant for the King in Black, but, uh, I do like her portrayal of Noel. There's another one I think like Venom, I can't remember what it is, where he's sitting I think it was a store exclusive where he's sitting on his throne with his, uh, with his necro sword. I really like that one. I want to try and pick up that one. Uh, so this was the big pickup of the week. Uh, this Peach Momoko Silver Surfer Black number four. This is uh, 1 in 25. I did post this on my Instagram account. Uh, really excited to get this one. Um, it's such a cool cover, you know, with uh, Silver Surfer using the board as a sword. It's the first time I kind of remember that. I could be wrong. Um, and, uh, I just like how Noel is kind of overbearing on him. And this entire Silver Surfer, uh, run, you know, only five issues is kind of this battle of Noel and Silver Surfer back and forth. So it really, uh, you know, exemplifies that. Uh, so I got this comic initially at the local comic book store. It was damaged. I sold it on eBay. Uh, for not very much because it you know obviously had a tick here on the um bottom and then i looked for another one and got this one um it looked really really good online i think i got it for like 25 bucks or 30 bucks or something like that and uh and then i pressed it myself and then i was gonna send it in but i saw that uh there was a signing so i sent it to them and they sent it to japan and then, uh, and then it came back. So it, this is always one where it's, you know, it's going overseas. You never know what's going to happen. Is it going to get damaged? Uh, so I was lucky to get it in a 9.8. I did pay for CGC to re, uh, to re press it, which I normally don't pay for CGC to do that because obviously I press it myself. But because it's going overseas and back and she was signing it I, and I didn't want I wanted to give it the best chance it could to get a 9.8. So I did uh, pay for them. So, you know, I can't remember how much I'm in. I'm probably in a hundred and some odd bucks into this one. Uh, but it's one of my favorite covers of all time. Certainly my favorite Peach Momoko cover of all time up to this point. I mean, she continues to do great work. So super excited to have this one. Um, and, uh, the only other significance is that Silver Surfer Black 4 is potentially, uh, and when I say potentially, it's, there's some, uh, there is one page that has, and mentions the Black Winner and could be a Black Winner cameo. I think Donny Cates actually in a tweet said it wasn't, but it looks like it is. So that would be the significance of this book, other than that this is a great cover. Uh. Some other ones that have been getting, you know, Star Wars is so hot right now. And I got this one years and years ago. And um, this is a magazine, so technically not a comic. But it's the first uh, appearance of a lot of the characters, Yoda, Boba Fett, etc. Um, and I got it some crazy deal for it. I can barely remember. But uh, but you, I bought them and, you know, so this one is, you know, you're seeing some sales. These are near mint, so... Um, and, and it's a, it's a, it's a thicker book. So it, the spine could split and all kinds of terrible things could happen. But I was able to get these, I think I got all three of them for $20. So I got, I have three of these things. 
and uh, they're kind of bumping up in price now. A fun one to have. Empire Strikes Back is my favorite uh, Star Wars movie, and um, and so excited to have these. I just pulled them out of storage. I almost forgot. I mean, I knew I had them, but then you're like, do I still have them? Did I sell them? I mean, I, I don't know if that ever happens to you, but I forget what I even have. I do keep uh, keep using one of the online applications. Uh, I keep a track of all the different comics that I have in there, but sometimes I forget, and I don't even think I put these in there because they're not really considered comics or magazines, but, uh, and they're oversized. So that makes it a little bit difficult to bag and board and where do you keep them? They don't fit anywhere. So you can see the size of them. They're much bigger than a normal comic or at least a modern but it's an exciting one to have, and uh, I love Star Wars. All right, on to the next big one of the week. So the Key Collector app, which, you know, people love it or hate it. Uh, for me, it's it's a tool. I You know, I can't remember everything. I, I you know, I, you know, if you tell me Spider-Man, you know, 129, I know that, you know, that's the first Punisher. But, you know... Even beyond that, I get confused. So for me, it's just a tool. I think people get a little bit uptight about the spec elements of it. And for me, since I've always, or not always, but you know, in the last couple of years, I've kind of attempted to stay ahead of the spec a little bit to the best of my ability using some of my insight um, that it only validates what, you know, what I'm thinking in my own mind. I think if you get an alert there and then you run to eBay, you're probably overpaying by then. You kind of got to figure it out, quote unquote, beforehand, which is not easy, I admit. But um, so for me, it's just a it's just an it's just a database of a lot of good things uh, to verify my own memory. Or and a lot of times I just don't know. I mean, there's so much stuff. I mean, some of these some I obviously some people know everything, but I I can't remember a lot of things but the alert came out the last week or i think maybe a week or two weeks ago that they're going to attempt to do another dungeons and dragons movie they've done a couple and obviously there was the big cartoon back in the day and i actually wasn't a really big fan of that cartoon i thought it was almost too kiddish i did play a ton of dungeons and dragons as a kid i was lucky enough when i was younger to meet some older uh older guys and and they uh let me play and and so i started playing i think maybe when i was I mean, I might have been, you know, third, fourth grade or something like that. I don't even know if they're playing it right. It was the original basic set with the uh, with the expert set, and we were rolling the dice and having a good time, you know. And it's come so far, uh, but I always have been a huge Dungeons and Dragons fan. Played through middle school, um, high school. I was really almost too busy, but then, um, but played some, and then uh, have come back to it as an adult. And have a group now that I play with. Uh, but such an incredible game uh, at so many levels. Um, I encourage you to, there's so many things online now that you can learn about it if you're interested. But I was able to grab this one at uh, Matt Martin's uh, Instagram uh, auction. He has every Thursday night. I highly encourage you if you're interested in buying, uh, he has a lot of modern books there, but other ones. Really just hot books that are interesting Um you literally for that week he's he's really good about it so uh check out his I'll, I'll link it below check out his instagram and his auctions are generally thursday nights he does so not only have i been playing dungeons and dragons but i've been trying to collect some of the back issue stuff that i used you know way way back when i was a uh, third and fourth grader which was the first edition of of dungeons and dragons but they reprinted those original books i think uh like in like 20 years ago and like maybe 10 years ago, I think in 2010 or something like that. And they have these really, really nice, the, the, the pages uh, have gold on the edges, but I was able to get these limited edition sets of the original books. I, I, I haven't even opened them. They're in the shrink wrap. They still have the, you know, the, this, what I don't even know what this was, the memorial thing they had on there. So um, these are fun ones to have. Um, and I just kind of bought them just as a collector. And then the last thing I'll show you that's kind of fun, which I 
I my original books were sold. Unfortunately, I went to college and my parents sold the books uh, to like a you know whatever half price bookstore or something like that. But that's okay. But I have been attempting to go back and find uh, the original books. So these are the books that I played with when I was, like I said, in third and fourth grade, etc. So here, let me turn this off. Maybe this will help. Sorry. Uh, a little bit better. So, um, no, that's not better. That's better. Uh, these are the original books. So not to get into super, you know, Dungeons and Dragons background, but there was an original, like, basic expert, and even before that, I think there was another version. But Advanced Dungeons and Dragons was the one that I started playing with. Oh, I guess I started playing with the basic, and then we quickly moved to Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. We got these books, which at the time were a little bit uh, controversial because they, you know, we thought there were demons running around, and if you played this game, you would end up, you know, slaughtering everybody. But uh, it's really pretty much the same game to a certain degree that the 5th edition is. Um, and these were the iconic books of the time I have I've been attempting to get near mint versions. So these are, I mean, these versions of these books are probably better than the books that I even had back in the day because I beat them up so much. Uh, so that's the player's handbook on the Dungeon Master's Guide. And then this was a, this was a book, Fiend Folio, which, uh, is, uh, just like a monster manual with additional monsters. I'm missing the monster manual and a book called Deities and Demigods, which talks about all the gods at the time. So I'm searching for near mint copies of those. You, of course, can buy them, but they're just like, you know, super expensive. And I'm not uh, ready to put up that kind of money yet. But uh, fun to have these. And um, we'll continue to uh, collect Dungeons and Dragons stuff. Um, a couple kind of iconic. Uh, storylines there's obviously the stuff that gary gygax did who was the original one but the one i think a lot of dungeons and dragons people that comes to mind is uh this one which is the Dragonlance series which was written years and years ago i read it <laughs> to tell you how old it is i read it as they were coming out so i read here's the first book this isn't the initial book this is a yeah my original book i don't even know where it went but this is a uh, one i purchased again that's used um, and, uh, so the original Dragonlance trilogy was three books and it's, you know, you can review it and love it or hate it. There's all kinds of people. But as a kid, I, uh, I love these books. They have great characters. They're not so much Dungeons and Dragons as much as they are just great fantasy. If you like fantasy books. So the Autumn Twilight, Winter Night and Spring Dawning. There's a number of iconic characters in there. So if they were to do a movie with the Dragonlance, and I think the Dragonlance, there's like the authors are suing, like the, it's all kinds of madness going on with Dragonlance now. So maybe we'll never see a movie. I think they did some cartoon movie years and years ago. It wasn't very good. So this, when you think of Dungeons and Dragons, this would be one that you would think they could possibly make a, you know, streaming Netflix flicks type show. But um, I have a number of these Dragonlance um, ones, which are fun. And then the other kind of iconic Dungeons and Dragons character uh, and area or world, they have in, in Dungeons and Dragons, they have just set up different worlds. And you can make your own world. That's kind of like, it's just like a sandbox, is uh, the Forgotten Realms. So the Forgotten Realms is this area, uh, this world that they've really fleshed out. And they had a number of different books that came out that took place in the Forgotten Realms. This is one of the first books, The Crystal Shard, which... I read it again years ago and was not a very good book, but fun at the time when I read it when I was younger, but has one of the most iconic uh, characters, this character here, which is named Dritz. Uh, this is his first comic here, and he is a dark elf. Dark elves are generally quote unquote bad guys, but he's somebody who escapes uh, the underworld and uh, I guess spoiler alert, right? And ends up being a hero. Um, he has, you know, iconically fights with two swords. And there's, I think, I, I might not even be exaggerating when I say there's 20 or 30 Dritz books if you wanted to read one. This is, this was the first one that came out. He's he's in it. It's not the first one in, if you want to read them uh, in order, but this was the first one, the Crystal Shard, that came out. And this is a trilogy, the Icewind Dale trilogy. 
he's a character in it. And then he was such a popular character, you know, it spawned a million, million more books. You can go online and they'll tell you exactly what order to read the books. The first three books of the series that kind of shows it, tells his origin uh, is really, really good. So I recommend that. That is one that I reread uh, a couple years ago and I really did enjoy it. Uh, so that would be one if you wanted to uh, read some fantasy. Um, they're easy reads, fun, and uh, lots of fighting and sorcery and Dungeons and Dragons type stuff. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with this Dungeons and Dragons movie. I'm super excited about it. Uh, Chris Pine apparently has signed up for it. We'll, we'll find out. Anyways, thanks for uh, stopping in. I hope you guys have a new great uh, rest of the week and New Year. I'll be back next week. Thanks. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. I'll talk to you all soon. Ooh.